The transition was so swift and brief that it seemed less than a tick of time lay between the moment I placed myself in Professor Hildebrand's strange machine and the instant when I found myself standing upright in the clear sunlight that flooded a broad plain. I could not doubt that I had indeed been transported to another world. The landscape was not so grotesque and fantastic as I might have supposed, but it was indisputably alien to anything existing on the earth. But before I gave much heed to my surroundings, I examined my own person to learn if I had survived that awful flight without injury. Apparently I had. My various parts functioned with their accustomed vigor, but I was naked. Hildebrand had told me that inorganic substance could not survive the transmutation. Only vibrant, living matter could pass unchanged through the unthinkable gulfs which lie between the planets. I was grateful that I had not fallen into a land of ice and snow. The plain seemed filled with a lazy summer-like heat. The warmth of the sun was pleasant on my bare limbs. On every side stretched away a vast level plain, thickly grown with short green grass. In the distance this grass attained a greater height, and through it I caught the glint of water. Here and there throughout the plain this phenomenon was repeated, and I traced the meandering course of several rivers, apparently of no great width. Black dots moved through the grass near the rivers, but their nature I could not determine. However, it was quite evident that my lot had not been cast on an uninhabited planet, though I could not guess the nature of the inhabitants. My ima imagination peopled the distances with nightmare shapes. It is an awesome sensation to su be suddenly hurled from one's native world into a strange new alien sphere. To say that I was not appalled at the prospect, that I did not shrink and shudder in spite of the peaceful quiet of my environs, would be hypocrisy. I, who had never known fear, was transformed into a mass of quivering, cowering nerves, starting at my own shadow. It was that man's utter helplessness was borne upon me, and my mighty frame and massive thews seemed frail and brittle as the body of a child. How could I pit them against an unknown world? In that is instant, I would gladly have returned to earth and the gallows that awaited me, rather than face the nameless terrors with which imagination peopled my newfound world. But I was soon to learn that those things views I now despised were capable of carrying me through greater perils than I dreamed. Hello my friends and welcome back to my channel and that is the opening few paragraphs of Al Murick by Robert E. Howard. Yes, none other than Robert E. Howard of Conan the Barbarian fame, of Cole the Conqueror renown. And this is about Esau, who you won't find in those other collections. He doesn't have his own collection, but he does have his own book here, Al Murek, which is, to, to spoil things a little bit, is outstanding. Uh, it, it was very, very enjoyable. Uh, if you enjoy fast-paced, adventuresome, uh, pulpy sword and sorcery, you will enjoy Al Murek. Um, it, it is... Very, very fun. Uh, it's fast-paced. It's got some interesting plot. But don't let it deceive you. This is not going to be like a science fiction story. It is instead sword and sorcery set on a new planet. Um, but that does allow Robert E. Howard to do some interesting things with uh, the, the creatures and the peoples that inhabit the planet. So it is almost a step into a, a portal fantasy, almost. Uh, where, where he's transported into a place that is very different than the Earth. And Esau uh, comes from the Earth, and he is very, very well known for being extremely strong. Um, and that serves him well. Uh, but he'll find quickly on El Murek that he is not the strongest person there. He has to use more than just brute strength. Uh, to survive and to overcome obstacles, which is uh, part of what makes it really interesting is that it, it's not just all muscle through and uh, bash things with a sword uh, until you succeed. Uh, and Conan the Barbarian is not that either. Uh, 
Um, that's one of the things that makes Conan such an enjoyable character is because he's using his brains probably even more so than his brawn at a lot of it, his obstacles that he runs into. So it says here, interplanetary epic of sword and sorcery. And yeah, I mean, interplanetary, you, you could cross that off. It's... As I said, it, it's not really science fiction. Um, it, it is a sword and sorcery set on a space planet. Um, but it is such a wonderful book. Um, I read this book in two days, which is, I mean, it, it's not a super long book. It's 156 pages, 157. So we're not talking long book. Most of the time, I still would take a week to get through a book like this. It is a testament to Robert E. Howard and Al Murek that it just sucked me in. And if I didn't have familial obligations and work obligations and things of that nature, I probably would have finished it in a single day, in a single sitting even, because that is how much it roped me in. And I can't emphasize that enough. It is the type of book that was just really, really a struggle to put down. And so I read it in two reading sessions um, on two separate days and absolutely had the time of my life with it. If Ray Bradbury was pulling me out of my slump, Robert E. Howard jettisoned me onto <clears throat> a course of getting back into reading more once again. And since then, I've finished a couple other books. I'm making really good progress in some things. Um, I, I know those of you that are regular watchers, uh, and thank you if you are, uh, you are probably expecting the next story out of The Good Old Stuff, which is an anthology by Gardner Duzois. Duzoy. I don't know how you say his last name. I should probably look that up at some point in time. Uh, but it is just absolute blast. And I've been reading a, a story a day out of here, and then I'll, I'll pop on and talk about that story very, very briefly uh, and read the introduction that Gardner gives to the author because it, that is, by and large, the best part of this book. And, and that's not to shortchange the stories because the stories uh, are incredibly good. The, the story I'm going to talk about next by Jack Vance is fantastic. Uh, it was my favorite story, but the one I read by uh, C.M. Kornbluth this morning was even better. And that's the true trajectory. I hope it continues to say that each one just kind of outdoes the one that precedes it. And I can just continue to have more and more new favorites as I go along. Uh, but I'm going to put this on hiatus until Monday because I had two reviews that I really wanted to do. I wanted to talk about El Murek. Uh, because Robert E. Howard pulled me out of the rest of the way out of that slump. And it has me just devouring uh, pages. I'm reading across a couple of different books. So in my reading quantity uh, in terms of time isn't nearly as high as it could be. Uh, so that's why I'm not just plowing through a ton of books. But the other one I'm going to be talking about, and this is going to be tomorrow, I'm going to be putting up a review for Angry Candy by Harlan Ellison, which was my very first Harlan Ellison volume. And I can tell you right now, much like Robert E. Howard when I finished uh, the, the first volume of Conan and was quick to deem him as one of my favorites, uh, I'm doing the same with Harlan Ellison after Angry Candy. I, I had a, a feeling I was going to enjoy Harlan Ellison based on some of the other things I've read. Some of his uh, some strong short stories that have won awards. Uh, but, but this was my first meeting of him in a different format because it's an entire collection, and I just absolutely loved it. So stay tuned for that tomorrow. So if you want fast, fun, sword and sorcery type fantasy set on an, another planet, you can't go wrong with Elmeric. Uh, it is delightful. It is exactly what you would expect to be from a Robert E. Howard story from a sword and sorcery book. Um, it's just that th this title right here says it all. It's the good old stuff. Um, 
because that's the premise of the good old stuff is it's the adventure stories and, and this is very much a very good adventure story <laughs> set in space so i mean this would have fit right into that volume if it wasn't so long and, uh, I, I think you will enjoy it if you enjoy either robert e howard or those sword and sorcery adventure stories i i'm repeating myself I'm going to stop here because just pick it up. Pick up a copy. You you will not regret this. Um, even if you've never read anything else by Robert E. Howard, this would not be a terrible place to start. Um, it wouldn't be his the ideal place to start, but it, it would not be a bad place to start because you will get something that very much shows off what Robert E. Howard is capable of doing. Um, and I absolutely loved it. So thank you. Booktube, and uh, I hope you have a great rest of your uh, day until I see you tomorrow for Angry Candy.